Today we got a battery or batteries from U Plus. Let's open it up. I think this is a company known for their motorcycle batteries. They just now started adding lithium iron phosphate deep cycle batteries to their lineup. Okay, so we've got, looks like we've got a couple of, or actually four in total, of these 12 volt, 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. And these guys actually did send us terminal screws and covers. There's the battery. All right, so the manual says we can put four in series and four in parallel. So I've got them all wired in parallel with this 12 gauge copper wire, and then I'm just gonna charge it up. So I've got this charger set to do about 40 amps. So it'd be 10 amps per battery, which is the specification of these 20 amp hour batteries. They can be charged at 10 amps. And let's just check to see what kind of current we've got flowing through these copper wires. I don't feel anything getting hot. So I don't think there's any problem really, but uh, we'll check it anyway. They were showing about roughly 20 amps across there, which is fine for 12 gauge. All right, so we'll just let those charge up and then we'll do a capacity test. All right guys, so these batteries are fully charged. Now let's do a capacity test. Okay, so we got the shunt all hooked up to the batteries. All four batteries are still in parallel. So let's go ahead and turn the inverter on. Let's connect maybe the heater. I want to try to get around 20 amps. Well, that's 56. That's too much. What's going to pull 20 amps? Maybe a fan? Oh, we got 17, 16 amps. Let's try another fan, add another fan, and then maybe that'll get us to where. All right, there we go. Now we're right at 20 amps. At 20.5. That's perfect. We got two fans running. I got this one on high, and I think this one's on medium. So we'll just let that run, and I'll be back when it completes. Alright you guys, we're down to 2% on the discharge test, 79.17 amp hours so far, so just a little under 1 amp hour to go, 1022 watt hours. So I do believe that we are going to pull full capacity, yep, so we're down to 1% and just a half of an amp hour to go. We've actually pulled the full capacity in watt hours. So the full capacity would be 256 watt hours times four, since we got the four batteries. That'd be 1,024, and we've got 1,027. And there we go, guys. We have hit the full 80 amp hours. We're at uh, 1,032 watt hours. So these guys have passed the capacity test, which is pretty awesome considering a lot of times these smaller batteries, they tend to come in under their rated capacity. So for these to, to meet their capacity, that's, that's pretty good. And we're still going. All right, so I think that uh, we're gonna be shutting down here real soon. There we go. Inverter started beeping, so we turned her off. And we landed at 82.633 amp hours, 1,062 watt hours. These definitely have passed the capacity test. All right, I think we should be able to get this lid off now. 
There we go. It's so hard to get these out. There we go. All right. Nice little bundle. This looks cleaner than a lot of these other smaller batteries that I've opened up. We got fiberboard all the way around. Let's cut into this. And there you can see the fiberboard all the way around. They did a great job constructing this battery. Usually, like I said, usually these little batteries like this are just thrown together kind of junky. I think these wires are 12 gauge. No, they're 14 gauge. Would have been better if these were 12, because that would have been better for the 20 amp. I do like how they added this, this heat protected uh, sleeve. I think I see the BMS right here. Indeed I do. And it is a, says a 20 amp for us BMS. I don't see, I don't think this is gonna have low temperature protection it looks like there's just a thermal thermal switch and there's our cells so GYNF 26 700 HP 400 milliamp 3.2 volt cells alright guys so I think that's going to be the end of the video like I said I did not find a temperature probe in here just a just a high temperature sensor I can see yeah, there's just a, a high temperature switch on here. So I think that's about it, all we can do on these batteries. I do think the build quality is pretty good and the capacity test comes out great. Uh, so I like this battery, it's pretty good. If you're looking for this kind of a small size battery, this one seems to be pretty good. It does not have low temperature protection, but uh, you, know, you can en enable that in most charge controllers these days. All right, guys, so I think that is going to be the end of the video, and I'll catch you on the next one.